Now, before we crack on to all the hints, tips and tricks to store your motorhome and camper van for winter, I've got a question for you. Why are you putting it away for winter? Okay, sure, it's a bit a bit colder, a bit drizzly, a bit rain, but come on, camper vans and motorhomes are not cheap these days. You need to be making the most of them. Get, get out there, use them. There's plenty of campsites still open. There's pub stops to be looked at and there's plenty of wild camping to be done. And the best part of this time of year is it's nice and quiet because everyone's indoors. So you need to get out there in, in these lovely, beautiful spots in your motorhome, enjoy them all to yourself. Come on. So if it is an option for you to use your motorhome over the winter, that is 10 times better than storing it. See, not only for you, but also for the motorhome. If getting out and about in the winter isn't your cup of tea or it isn't an option for you, then let's crack on with the hints, tips and tricks in this video, shall we? Now, some of you are probably thinking, can't we just park the motorhome? We'll make sure it's all locked, safe and secure, and then come back in the spring. Well, not really, because we need to prevent moisture, damp, mold, and the freezing. All these, as soon as the weather changes, all these can greatly affect our motorhome. Now, before we crack on with them, let's start off with the basics, shall we? First and foremost, you want to turn off your gas and potentially disconnect it if you're if you're you know if you know how to and you you're confident and capable of doing that then turn off the gas and disconnect the bottle because you're not using them over winter there's no need for them to be connected next when you park up your motorhome don't use the handbrake put it into first or reverse and then uh, use wheel chocks if you've got them a couple of bricks something like that this way it can prevent any damage to the handbrake prevent the uh, brakes from sticking and yeah it's just a lot a lot less hassle of, of things that can go wrong once it's left for a long period of time if you're not coming back to your motorhome for the whole of winter and you're only going to come back in spring when it's nice and warm and starts to get nice and uh, cheery again then you might want to look at inflating your tires just a little bit more cracks can form in the walls of the tire the tread could be fine the age of the tire could be fine but because they've just sat there not doing anything and and they've got uh, the tires gone down slightly cracks can form so if you just inflate them just a tad a tad more than normal that will give them a little bit of extra wiggle room for when they do start to deflate over over the winter one thing that a lot of people forget about is the awning now as you're getting ready to put your motorhome away and put it tuck it in for bed uh, over the winter try and get the awning out just for about 15 20 minutes on a dry breezy day this will just make sure it's got no moisture on it it's nice and dry so then when you do roll it in it it's it's, it's bone dry there's no moisture in there and no mold can grow and then stain your lovely awning which you want to be using next spring and summer damp and mold now, I'm not going to try and get this all scientific on you and why, how it happens, but basically because of the temperature change and the lack of airflow in the motorhome whilst they're sitting stagnant for the winter, that creates the, the damp and the moisture and that creates, that's a, that can possibly allow mold to start growing, which is what we don't want. So we need to empty all our belongings out of the motorhome. So luckily i'm at oak tree right now and they kindly let me use one of their motorhomes you need to basically have your cupboards like this remove all your belongings all your clothes from the cupboards the wardrobes the drawers everywhere i know it's a pain i know i know it's not fun but this will prevent problems if you are really worried about damp in your motorhome then there are things that you can use like damp catchers, moisture catchers. Now, I would only use them if you are gonna regularly empty them or change them. Because the last thing you wanna do is have one of these moisture catchers, it fills up and now it's like a little bucket of water, uh, a bucket of liquid inside the motorhome, which is what we're trying to prevent. We don't want moisture in the motorhome. So as long as you're gonna be emptying them and changing them regularly, then yeah, they can be a great thing to use. If not, then I would just try and make as much airflow as possible um, and go without. Once you've removed all the uh, all your clothing and your belongings, you need to remove your bedding and your sheets. Again, this is just to prevent, uh, to help airflow and to prevent the moisture from building up. When it comes to curtains like these, you wanna open these out, pull them over the windows because then they're not bunched up, the air can flow freely around them and you know they're not gonna get again moisture and mold now this is a big one if it's possible for you to take these cushions and your mattress inside the house 
through the winter whilst you're storing the motorhome you're not using it then that would be ideal if that's not a possibility and it's out of the question then we just need to make sure we can get some air flowing through and around these cushions and the mattress rather than just leave them the way they are basically the way you can do that is make it look like the kids the grandkids my nephew minis have made a kids camp and a kids fort you want to get the the, the cushions and then just be <laughs> easier said than done lift this up put it on its side you know like that i'm probably blocking off the camera right now but like that so now i know this looks a mess but air can flow freely around all the cushions and you do this with your mattress you can if you've got a ladder you can put the ladder underneath if you've got a few uh, boxes you can put them and then put the mattress on top of them um just allow air to get around them it doesn't look pretty it doesn't look classy but it works freezing now that's prevent your tanks your pipes your taps all of them going wrong now first and foremost we need the water out of the motorhome you need to empty your tank empty your fresh water tank and your grey water tank and leave the taps open so if there is anything in there you know it'll, it'll just make its way out if you've got a toilet that has a tank of its own um some of you've got ta uh, tanks where they have the, the pink fluid or something like that then that needs to be emptied as well just to make sure that's not going to freeze over winter um again it's some of you have got them some of you haven't mine hasn't along with the toilet you need to empty and clean the cassette now you know it's, it's not a nice job that isn't but yeah empty that clean that then if you're going to pop it back in then i would pop it back in and i'll just open the, the the flap just a tiny bit just again to allow airflow if anything's going to freeze if anything's going to expand or contract it's got room to it's not all sealed and that should help you uh that, that should prevent any problems now you've emptied the tank you've emptied the fresh water tank you need to turn the pump on and drain the taps so you need to turn the taps on they will have air in them and they will start spluttering because the tank's empty this is fine um as soon as they've uh, there's clearly no more water coming out turn the pump off but leave the taps open if you've got a mixer tap put it halfway between hot and cold and leave it open but the pump off this is because if there is any water which there probably will be left in the pipes if that was to freeze it will expand now when it expands if there's nowhere for it to go it will just pot, it would pot it could burst the pipes so we want it to be able to start expanding if it is in there and then come out of the tap and have room to move and not burst pipes lastly you need to drain your water boiler right near the boiler there'll be a tap you flick the tap and all the water will drain out if you've got a um if you've got a newer mode home which you've got frost protection there will be a manual frost protection button that you can press again you can press that and it'll drop all the water out you want to get rid of all the water from from the fresh tank the gray tank and the boiler to make sure there's no chance that any of those can freeze when you're draining the taps make sure you don't forget the ones in the shower and the bathroom make sure you leave these ones open and the actual shower head and leave that on the floor open so then if anything any more water is in that system it can drain out down the sink or through the shower tray and as we left the gray water open the gray water tap open it can just drain straight out now we move on to the kitchen my favorite part of the motorhome fridge you need to turn it off empty it clean it and then leave the door open we want the fridge to be able to breathe through winter not getting any moisture not keeping any bad smells in so if you put some of them have a little latch so you can put the latch on to keep the door open or just stick a tea towel in the top and then leave the door ajar and that'd be perfectly fine moving on to our cupboards you need to remove like our belongings all food from the motorhome not only because it's going to probably go bad over winter or tins can they can start to rust because they get condensation and they're, me they're metal they can start to rust and then they can make a little rust spot on the bottom of them and thirdly because we don't want to give any potential rodents or vermin snacks if you are uh particularly worried about um vermin getting into the motorhome there are some uh sprays on the market anti-vermin sprays that you can spray in the wheel arches of the motorhome and around the wheels to pre prevent and deter uh rodents and mice and rats getting into the motorhome uh, which i've heard a few people use uh, to great success i personally haven't used it because i'm always moving in my motorhome one other thing i did see a long time ago and i always remember it is motorhome map and i'll put a little clip up of it now 
um, up here what he what he did is he got a piece of chocolate and he put it on a little bit of foil and he put it square dead dead center in the motorhome on the floor uh, once it's all packed up and he's just walking out of it and it's all done because if a if a, if a rodent does get in the motorhome then they are going to find that piece of chocolate because there's nothing else in here um, and they're either going to take that chocolate away and run or they're going to gnaw it and then there's going to be teeth marks in it so then when you do come back to the motorhome one you'll either notice the, the piece of chocolate's gone or you will notice that there's teeth marks and gnaw marks um so you know a, uh, a rodent has been in the motorhome which you can then start investigating where it is what it's how it's got in and what it's done i thought that was a really good tip because the chocolate's not going to go bad over winter it'll just sit there it's not a heat wave so it's not going to melt and make a mess it's a perfect little uh, perfect little thing to leave there um and to be able to see if you had any any unwanted visitors now we've gone through the hints and tips inside and outside the motorhome to prevent the frost the damp and the mold one thing i will say is if you can take your motorhome for a short drive 15 20 minutes every four to six weeks throughout the winter it would help it no end get some heat in the engine get the tires moving get some fresh air on it through the motorhome and then park it up again it will do the motorhome wonders i think you'll all agree it's pretty easy to keep the mold out the damp out and stop the pipes bursting when you follow a few simple hints and tips like we've gone through in this video i hope you've enjoyed this video and it's been useful for you if you've got any hints or tips for the winter to store the motorhomes or camper van i'd love you to drop them in the comments below i want to say a massive thanks to oak tree for letting me rummage around and and terrorize one of their motorhomes so i could film this video if you are in the nottingham area and you want to have a little look at a motorhome for your potential next one or, or your first one then definitely stop by they've got so much on offer and they are top guys they really are can't fault them in any way so i hope you've enjoyed this video and i'll catch you guys in the next one